Okay, this is uh, part of a, a, a celebration of 50 years uh, of sociology at Manchester University. Uh, Professor Wes Sharrock uh, is the longest serving member of staff in the department, uh, 47 years. Uh, st uh, started uh, as an assistant lecturer in 67. And uh, in that sense, as one of the, as the, as the sole survivor of the, uh, of the era of, of Professor Peter Worsley. Uh, and you, you, uh, well, you did a PhD under uh, uh, Professor Worsley, and he was the first uh, sociology professor uh, at Manchester uh, 50 years ago. Uh, and I've, uh, um, I've, looked out, uh, I've looked out the title of that, Concepts in Action, a Sociological Analysis of Ideological Activities, which and take, take you back to that youthful sort of era. <laughs> uh, well, first question I wanted to, to start with is a biographical one, was of um, uh, what motivated you to study sociology at university in the first place? And that was University of Leicester, I believe, yeah? It was. Uh, actually, I came here in 1965 as a grad, so I've done right. 49 years in, uh, ah, right, yeah. in, 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 in on the premises. Right. <laughs> uh, nearly 50. Nearly, near, not quite the 50, yeah. yeah. A year late. Um, yeah. uh, well, I, 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 I mean, I was brought up a, uh, by a, a Methodist mother and a Marxist father. Um, and so uh, sociology turned out to be things I've been talking about uh, ever since I started arguing with my friends and so on. So I intended to be a, an economist uh, when I went to university. And uh, of course, then I found sociology and, oh, that's what I've been doing. Yeah. Uh, and of course, uh, I did an undergraduate degree at Leicester where there was an extraordinarily good standard yeah. of uh, education yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, in sociology particularly. And uh, of course, an awful lot of uh, now senior or retired figures in, in, in the discipline in, in this country yeah. uh, got their degrees there round about yeah, yeah, the yeah. same time yeah. uh, that I was there. Uh, so, um, yeah, Anthony and, and Lord, I was, Lord I was, Anthony I was, Giddens was, was, I, I, was, I was given tutorials by Tony Giddens and, and went to his lectures uh, in social psychology along with uh, several other uh, very fine teachers, yeah. uh, particularly Percy Cohen, um, yeah. uh, I thought was the best of a very good crew, but yeah. Giddens was also a very striking uh, yeah. teacher and it was towards the end of his uh, social psychology, of course, in my third year, that um, uh, I first heard mention of Irving Goffman, right. yeah, which yeah. was a, a fairly decisive moment. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so just turning back to sort of, uh, to the Manchester Worsley uh, era, uh, um, and considering we're in, in some ways celebrating 50 years since, since that, that great era, uh, um, I mean, what, what was that, uh, being the sole survivor, uh, uh, of that era. What, what was that era like as a department? And clearly then it was the Department of Sociology and Social Anthropology. Indeed it was, yeah. and Social Anthropology was the senior department, yeah. uh, with Max Gluckman uh, uh, being a very, uh, often very terrifying uh, yeah. preeminence there. Yeah. Uh, but the anthropology department was also filled with uh, extremely smart people. And of course, all of us were, well, no, not all of us, an awful lot of us were very young. Yeah. Uh, so actually, the, the senior people in, in sociology uh, tended to be anthropologists in, in yeah. origin, like Worsley himself, yeah. Valdo Pons, Ronnie Frankenberg. Yeah. Uh, they'd all been associated with the Manchester School of Anthropology. Yeah. Um, so there were very strong relationships between the two, uh, although they, like many other relationships in both departments, were pretty inimical uh, in yeah. lots and lots of ways. So it was a very turbulent yeah. At time intellectually, it was very exciting. Yeah. Uh, the anthropologists were extremely rigorous and um, yeah. uh, contestive uh, investigators, yeah. and so uh, the, the, the seminars in anthropology were yeah. often thrilling. Uh, so to did take it? Part in. Yeah, did it? Did it? It set up a, a sort of a, a commitment to types of ethnographic fieldwork and to a certain extent. Well, on my, yeah, on, yeah. on my part, yeah. uh, well, John Lee and I, who, who were yeah. very much involved together uh, at this time, John was, at, so he'd been here as a grad and gone over to Salford, then he came back. Uh, but we, um, we both had, uh, we found we had the same kind of ambition, which was to yeah. connect Weberian 
uh, action sociology with uh, something like anthropological fieldwork yeah, yeah. uh, uh, and some of the uh, landmark studies that, that initially were examples for us were, were ones that were a kind of anthropological approach to the workplace. Yeah. Uh, yeah. David Morgan, the Connissons, yeah. uh, Sheila Connison and so on, Tom Lopton yeah. uh, had been doing these shop floor studies yeah. Yeah. Um, and uh, you know we both tried to apply that model yeah. uh, and a lot of our thinking was shaped by well how much of this do we need and how much can we scrap yeah. Um, but it was it was very, uh, yeah. very. They were very careful studies, and they were very yeah. provocative for, for yeah. your thinking. And was that was it thinking more generally about what was happening in sociology, sort of in in, the, in Britain at the time? Was it was it going against the grain, or was oh, it? Well, I, I, I mean, the, the boot is on the other foot now in the the quantitative qualitative yeah. um, relationship, where uh, if you said you were interested in quality of inquiry, a lot of people regard you as slightly nuts. Yeah. Uh, and a lot of people had um, uh, rather millenarian conceptions of uh, yeah. what quantification would bring. Yeah. So I remember John Lee coming back from um, a BSA meeting down in, in uh, uh, Fallowfield. Yeah. And he said, God, he says, says, Tony Coxon said that mathematical sociology will be able to prove that Parsons is bunkum. Why do you need the mathematics? Um, uh, but it was that kind of. Uh, yeah, so I, I say well, and of course they were in a much stronger position in lots of ways. Yeah. Uh, but of course I say the. I mean not. But of course there was the anthropology. Well, even Clive Mitchell yeah. uh, was trying to bring uh, quantification into uh, yeah. uh, into anthropology much more. Um, but um, the anthropologists. I mean, fieldwork was what most of them were yeah, yeah. mainly doing. They try and quantify some of that even, but yeah. uh, no, so there was plenty of uh, people engaged in, in qualitative research. Yeah. Um, but um, no, the, the higher ground was held, I think, yeah. by the, the ambition yeah. to, to do measurement and mathematics. Okay. And I suppose conceptually, you know, class and uh, was still a, was an obsession or... Well, of, of, a... well of course, a, a, lot of, a lot of sociology at that time, I used to think was, well, a lot of it, a lot of it was sociology as labour voting. Yeah. Uh, but then, of course, uh, the Marxist res or the Marxist insurgency, I guess, rather than yeah. resurgency, insurgency yeah. uh, overtook all that. Um, yeah. And then, of course, uh, the figure of Althusser. I think. I mean, I, I yeah. don't know how historically precise it is, but certainly the, the figure yeah. of Althusser yeah. uh, appeared as a, a saving beacon for yeah. uh, a lot of. Uh, ambitions that had seemed to be uh, more questionable. Yeah, yeah. I just thought, for, for memory's sake, as I take you back to the, as I said, the, 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 the 1970, int, int, introducing sociology with, uh, obviously edited by Peter Worsley, and the various characters, they might yeah. bring you back, uh, uh, Clyde Mitchell, David Morgan, Valdo Pans, Brian Roberts, yourself, yeah. uh, Robin Ward, and I think you'd done, this is 1970, and you'd done chapter eight, the problem of order, yes. which again is is uh, uh, um, maybe move into that uh, Goffman-esque uh, interests, uh, yeah. yeah, in in some ways. Yeah. Well, I initially did that as a. I mean, I tried to do it as a uh, a kind of synthesis of various strands. Yeah. Um, which didn't seem to me unsatisfactory as a chapter, though. It yeah. Certainly yeah. didn't seem to me yeah. satisfactory as a syn. Synthesis, yeah, uh, and obviously the great. Uh, I mean, uh, working on on Parsons. I mean, is is uh, it, it still has to be done, and uh, that's something that, that was. I take it in your mind as well. Oh yeah, uh, Parsons, no, yeah. I, I, I mean, I think Mark Parsons has been very, very badly done by yeah. Um, yeah. over the years. But as as I probably say again, he's not alone yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> in this. Um, yeah. T turning, uh, I just uh, and then another book which is a, a classic, an early classic. You know, Roy Turner's, you know, ethno methodology uh, from 70, 74, I'm, I'm pretty sure here. Uh, yes. Seventy four, yes. 74, yeah. And you've got your on owning knowledge as a as a chapter right, in yeah. there. And it, I suppose, in some ways, it brings me then to the uh, your uh, turn uh, to uh, uh, an interest in in um, in ethno methodology, uh, um, which is a you know. Many considered to be a, a radical position. Um, uh, what was the what was the reason for the the, the shift to ethno methodology and the interest in ethno methodology? Which again, obviously, it, it's been a, um, 
a, 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 a part of your, your sociological journey for a, a lengthy period of time and you become known as a world leader and specialist in, in that area. Yeah, well, it began with uh, Giddens' lecture um, yeah. uh, and um, his discussion of Goffman. And um, whilst I, I, I would say nothing against uh, uh, Leicester as a, a place to study sociology at that time, yeah. uh, I had kind of this nagging uh, dissatisfaction that you couldn't really easily apply all the schemes and stuff to the world around you that you can yeah. see every day. Uh, and of course, as soon as you start hearing a bit about Goffman, um, mm. I think it started out by reading a bit about Preedy or yeah, reciting. Yeah. He may even yeah. have, because he has a very good memory, or he did. Yeah. Um, uh, once once uh, you said, oh, you thought, that's interesting. Yeah. So I, I'd read The Trumpet Shall Sound as an undergrad, and I thought it was a great book. So yeah. when I saw a letter in The New Statesman signed by Peter Worsley, you know, it's, I thought I'll go there. Mm -hmm. uh, so I actually came here in, uh, uh, in the summer before my graduate year to get a card for the library, yeah. where it turned out all of Irving Goffman's books were in the basement. Yeah. Um, so I read, yeah. and oh yes, this is really good, but it, it's not satisfactory, it doesn't go far enough. Yeah. And then in, I think, it, I'm not sure, 1966 or 67, uh, Goffman was a, a Simon Fellow here yeah. for several weeks. He gave several lectures. And in one of them, he suddenly started talking about uh, Harold Garfinkel and, and Harvey Sachs. Yeah. Uh, so naturally, my ears pricked up. Yeah. Um, uh, I had actually heard of Garfinkel before, but it hadn't really registered. But yeah. uh, certainly never. And oh, wow, that sounds really interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so then, of course, I'm, I'm hanging out waiting for studies in ethnomethodology to, to appear. It came out 67. It did, and yeah. I bought it the day it turned up in the bookshop, 57 yeah. shillings and sixpence, as yeah. I recall, sure. and, um, which would be meaningless to people yeah. now. Um, but, um, and, of course, within a day and a half, I'm ringing up John saying, this guy's done it all, oh, we're screwed, you know, these things, we've, he's, he's already gone through them. Yeah. Uh, so, obviously, we, we had to follow... Yeah. follow that up and then of course yeah. it, 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 it uh, we discovered the kind of large well, number of people already engaged in that kind of work. Yeah. And, I mean what, what, what I mean one of I suppose Garfinkel's sayings is that the heart and soul of the matter I mean what, what was it what was the, the of the heart and soul of ethno methodology that, that, that sort of tugged at you and grabbed you? Well I, I, I think it was uh, well I mean there were all sorts of I mean partly it was the, the methodological logic of yeah. of seeing sociology's uh, difficulties with the objectification of social phenomena, which yeah. I think uh, is, is a, a, a still an under, under, undervalued uh, yeah. issue. But um, uh, the, the other thing was, of course, the, the uh, possibility of something like a real-time construction of the, the actor's point of view, yeah. uh, you know, rather than the attribution of yeah. uh, frames of reference and stuff. You could, could yeah. uh, attempt to investigate how social structures are encountered in uh, the course of yeah, yeah. activities. And, yeah. and that uh, calls for much more attention to the uh, precise character of the actor's point of view yeah. than any other scheme of sociology was yeah. was then offering or I think does today. Yeah. And this idea of Garfinkel's of not turning the actors into into judgmental dopes uh, I, I take it is, is taken seriously by you in the sense of, of resisting ironic analysis and tre treating actors effectively democratically. Uh, yes, well I, I was part of, it's part of um, really the empirical uh, aspect, which is uh, people tend to presume uh, what the uh, member's point of view is without uh, taking the trouble of trying to nail it down yeah. uh, specifically. Yeah. So I always dread those moments in so many texts where people say, well, this is how we normally think of time, space, yeah, uh, yeah. other people, whatever it is. And you think, no, no, I don't think like that at all. Yeah. Uh, and I don't think other people could think like that yeah. and live the lives they use, live yeah. the lives they lead, which is why it uh, fits very much with Garfinkel's yeah. thing about the cultural dope. The cultural yeah. dope is somebody who's too stupid yeah, yeah. to live the life they're actually yeah. living. Um, yeah. And was it, did it feel, I mean, many have seen it in, in the sociological community as, as different, as, as radical, 
clearly it's been misunderstood and mischaracterised. I mean, did it did it feel radical at oh, the time? Oh, it did. I think to a lot of people it was terrifying. Uh, I think a lot. I think it's what I was saying about Althusser before. I think a lot of people thought that that sociology was fundamentally under threat, yeah. uh, and many people thought that their conception of what sociology is was uh, going to be destroyed. Um, yeah. And uh, uh, fortunately, it turned out there were, uh, for them at least, it turned out there were there were alternative routes where you could yeah. uh, claim to have overcome and bypassed yeah. these difficulties. But yes, and and of course it was um, for a short while very sensational. Yeah. I mean, there was. I remember uh, re reading a review where someone had, had characterised that it uh, posed the question: Is this the end of sociology? Yes. <laughs> oh, indeed. Um, no people. Re I say people did regard it. Uh, as a, a kind of um, yeah. uh, eliminative critique of sociology. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. And it, is it, it, you know, that we think of that, that great Melvin Polner settled down into the suburbs uh, statement. Yes. Yeah. Uh, uh, it's been mis misunderstood, but it's sort of, it, it's, it's sort of settled down, if you will, although th there is this idea then, is it, is it still misunderstood and, and mischaracterised? Um, yeah, well, yes, I, think, I, yeah. I, I mean, I, I don't think um, uh, that um, uh, sociology is particularly well understood yeah. uh, even today, despite uh, getting almost mandatory mentions in all sorts of places. Yeah. I've never read a, a very well-informed, careful and effective critique of yeah. uh, Garfinkel's work, for example, yeah. uh, and the best criticisms come from yeah. within the ethnometallurgical circle. But of course, it's not like special pleading for sociology because yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I mentioned Parsons and the way in which his yeah. work has been bastardised. Uh, yeah. I'm sure that lots and lots of Marxists would complain about the travesties of Marx yeah. that circulate and so on. Yeah. Um, the the, the um, uh, sociological yeah. criticism is not a, a very exact yeah. Uh, yeah. practice in most cases. I mean, if, if I was to come along as a new student, I mean, and I remember this as our Bible was as a third year. Uh, <laughs> we, we, this was biblical to, to the students. Was, was a, it, was a, it, a little short uh, uh, classic. It was a printing disaster. Uh, um, uh, but it, if, if, if you, I mean, and clearly there's a, there's a literature on ethnomethodology, but if I was to come as a student and say, look, what are the landmark studies? I mean, uh, what, what would I look to? Clearly there's... Studies in ethnomethodology is, yeah. I mean, it, it is very much Garfinkel's creation. Yeah. Uh, and of course, yeah. uh, the other um, kind of outstanding stuff is, is um, uh, the works by Harvey Sachs yeah. and his collaborations with uh, Shegloff and Jefferson, not yeah. to mention yeah. uh, their own independent work in these areas. I think yeah. those are uh, leading examples for, yeah. for everybody in these fields. Yeah. Um, I was always very fond of uh, Larry Weeder's Convict Code, yeah. Um, yeah. Language and Social Reality. I yeah. thought that yeah. was uh, an exemplary study which has, has never been surpassed. Yeah. But yeah. then there is a whole range of very good studies yeah. on, on sure. various topics by yeah. a whole crew of, yeah. uh, uh, of people engaged in and taking ethnomethodology seriously. Yeah. Um, and and on, just on that issue of conversation analysis, has it become is become rather sort of segmented if you will from uh, and separated from uh, ethnomethodology for some I mean is that a is there an uneasy relationship there or oh very much I think yeah. um, uh, that, that, in many ways I think uh, mostly one of indifference yeah. probably now um, myself I think that the conversation analytic, analytic project as it was constructed was completed yeah. I think uh, the 1970 paper, yeah. 74 paper on um, turn taking yeah. really synthesised yeah. uh, and crystallised yeah. uh, the fundamental scheme. And, and I don't think there's been any significant improvements on that since. Yeah. I think conversation analysis has turned, turned much more into a methodological aid than a, yeah. uh, a topic of, of substantive inquiry. Yeah. Not an absolute matter, of course, but relatively speaking. Okay. In terms of the, the sort of future of, of ethnomethodology, and I say that post Garfinkel obviously passing away, that some might feel he had sort of strong strong hands on the, on the project. <laughs> um, uh, I take it then that it's it's going to be quite dispersed. Uh, I think Lynch calls it a pervasive legacy. Um, yes, well, of course, it, it never was um, coordinated. I mean, Garfinkel. 
uh, would not exercise any kind of uh, yeah. control or censorship yeah. uh, over yeah. uh, the field he'd spawned. Uh, yeah. And if you, if you remember, he announced to, I think it was a gathering of ethnomethodologists, that as far as he were concerned, they were a bunch of bastards. Yeah. And this was not just a characterological assessment, <coughs> but also a, a, a disowning of them as people who could claim to say uh, independently of him what ethnomethodology was. Um, yeah. So I think um, it, it's, it's always been open to all kinds of, of understandings. I and think, that, yeah, that, that is it, the, the 67, the, the Purdue Symposium yes. about uh, uh, ethnomethodology as a shibboleth. Yes, they Make can me. have it. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Give it to them. The <laughs> hand it over to the rumour mill. Yeah. <laughs> right, right. Um, no, I, I think so. I mean, it, it was never uh, carefully coordinated. Um, I mean, it's never been the most solidary of collectivities. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, and uh, I say people are often uh, keen to adopt it and make it responsive to uh, interests that they have. Yeah. Uh, rather than necessarily to try and uh, pursue uh, the central concerns and yeah. tendencies that got it going in the first place. Yeah. So classic sort of use and abuse. Uh, I yes. Think it's oh, yes. Well, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. in any field. Yes. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, it's not. It's not really directed towards any unified program now. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I don't think. Um, to, to, I mean, turning more, Jim, because it, obviously you've had a, 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 a massive uh, seminal input in, into uh, uh, ethnomethodology, but also you've obviously had long-standing interests in sociological theory uh, uh, and the relationship between what we could call classical and contemporary sociological sort of thinking. And there's books here, I think you were just saying, was that Perspectives is in its, is it, it's going into seventh, uh, sixth, sixth, sixth edition. edition yeah. uh, I mean, we've got uh, Understanding Modern Sociology, uh, sorry, Understanding yeah. Classical Sociology yeah. and Modern, obviously, edited books with, with, with colleagues. Yeah. And I mean, you'll find these on, uh, they, they become standard uh, um, uh, books on introductory sociology courses, sociological sort of theory courses. Yes. Well, um, what, what's, the, what's the importance of, uh, of, of relating uh, uh, of classical and uh, uh, contemporary well, theory I, in, I, in your I, training? I, I, was, I was reading another piece uh, only the other day denouncing the creation of a canon, the Marx Weber, yes. Durkheim stuff and so on. Uh, and I think a couple of years back we got abused um, the understanding classical sociology for the same thing. Yeah. Um, I mean, these are not textbooks, they're introductions. Yeah. And, and we generally, I think, try and make the point that uh, the use is to try and uh, point people towards uh, the sources of the language that they will be using yeah. uh, in particularly their courses and stuff to yeah. understand better uh, what the point of talking in the ways yeah. that are recommended to them are. Yeah. And to do that, I mean, you need to connect them to what are the actual sources, which are very much yeah. the, the great the great trilogy, yeah. plus one or two other figures, and, and um, yeah. uh, very much the, 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 the continuity is there, yeah. uh, rather than with stuff that was going on in the 50s and 60s. Yeah. Um, I suppose in that sense, it, it's like sort of necessary building blocks, particularly for undergraduates, that they, this is part of their theoretical toolkit. Well, if, if, if Merton's uh, quotation of who was it, Thomas? I can't remember, quotation yeah. that a discipline that fails to forget its founders is lost. Yeah. is correct, then sociology is lost. Yeah. Uh, it hasn't forgotten its founders. Yeah. Uh, and indeed, a lot of the, the best work uh, that I've come across in recent years by younger sociologists yeah. is, is very often uh, scholarship on yeah. uh, the, um, yeah. the, the founders. Yeah. Um, so it's still live stuff. And I take it there's obviously been recycling of topics in sociology oh, and well, <laughs> yeah. massively. Sorokin was complaining about right. that in 1955. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> and the, 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 the uh, criticism yeah. uh, would apply today, yeah. Just m moving, uh, stepping back a bit more generally, I mean, what's always struck me, Wes, and you've taught me since I was a, a, an undergraduate, second year, 1985, and obviously through my, through my PhD as well, is your, um, 
r really your sort of pluralism, your, your knowledge of, of other fields. I mean, I remember when I did mine in society as a third year undergraduate, I mean, it, it was, it, it was mind-blowing in terms of what, what else was on offer in the department. I mean, we were looking into uh, um, uh, anthropology, you know, you know, as Andy Witchcraft, we were looking at uh, 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 mental health and illness, uh, SAS, uh, uh, cultural relativism. I mean, what this was, of course, really uh, looking at the, 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 the radical, the borders, the innovative borders between philosophy, sociology, anthropology, psychology. Uh, and it, it, it was, and, I, and, I, and various other students at the time have gone through that, that, that uh, uh, radicalising in a way. Uh, so, I mean, what, what, do you, what do you feel the relationship is between those, those sort of sister disciplines, if you well, will? Well, I, I, I never, I mean, I don't think sociology is a, uh, a unified discipline yeah. uh, in any real sense. Uh, I mean, I always say to the students, well, yes, we teach you Marx, Weber and Durkheim. Yeah. But what you should do is go and look at, say, one of the great historical books like uh, Barnes and Becker's Social Thought from Law to Science yeah. or some of Sorokin's yeah. uh, contemporary social theories um, texts. And you'll be astonished at the number of sociologists you've never heard of. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's always been a highly diversified yeah. uh, and it's very much a freelance yeah. enterprise sociologists do what they want yeah. um, uh, they're not bound by uh, yeah. conceptions of what sociology yeah. what you ought to do uh, for the needs of sociology they want sociology to serve uh, whatever intellectual or political or social purposes they have yeah. uh, and and so of course uh, they pull things off in different directions yeah. so of course um, uh, I always remember uh, Roy Wallace at a, us deputising at a head of department meeting, yeah. I think for Hugh yeah. Bynan, and yeah. um, they were going on about sociologists, and Roy Wallace said, listen, he said, what you've forgotten is that sociology livened up yeah. all these other disciplines. Yeah. Uh, I mean, they, they, you know, they, I mean, Spanish even, yeah, uh, yeah language. Um, yeah. I mean, they, these were pretty quiescent and very narrowly yeah. focused disciplines, and sociology... Yeah, went yeah. swept through them all. It's had yeah. a very wide-ranging, yeah. uh, if not always beneficial, influence across yeah. many different disciplines. And of course, uh, whilst I'm not against, by any means, against academic boundaries, um, yeah. I mean some of the social science disciplines, particularly psychology, yeah. uh, anthropology, uh, yeah. and sociology, are, are very closely connected in reality. Yeah. Um, and and the attempt to uh, keep them segregated merely means that uh, a lot of the um, difficulties that they confront uh, are not explicitly recognised. Yeah. I mean, has it still in that sort of vein, I mean, I know that has Wittgenstein been a, a particular uh, sort of influence on the way that you uh, reason and analyse and, and your sensibility in, in, in a way? Oh, very much. Um, yeah. I, I, yeah. I mean, Winch is... Um, point about sociology being an offspring of philosophy yeah. uh, has always seemed to me um, uh, the fundamental point and yeah. sociologists generally don't recognise the extent to which they're up to the neck in philosophical issues yeah. and even when they think they are engaged with philosophy they don't recognise the extent yeah. to which yeah. uh, what they're doing trails lots of other philosophical issues. Yeah. Uh, I mean yeah. I think sociologists often think of a philosophy as a disciplinary specialisation. Yeah. Uh, so they think, oh, philosophy is what philosophers do. Yeah. Uh, what Wittgenstein tried to, to teach us is that actually some of the more interesting uh, problems of philosophy uh, arise not in professional philosophy, but yeah. in um, mathematics or yeah. history. Yeah. Uh, and they arise in the social sciences yeah. too. It really is a matter of uh, trying to understand what the problem is. Yeah and whether the problem is a genuine one that requires solution through the application of empirical methods yeah. or not, yeah, yeah. Uh, or whether instead it needs to be dismantled yeah. uh, through conceptual inquiry. Now, I think very few people uh, are very clear on my views on that. So uh, there's a, a sort of a, a linguistic sort of underpinning there in, in a way in that some of the problems are problems of, of linguistics in it to a certain in, to an extent. Oh, I, I think yeah, I yeah. think sociology underestimates the work the language does. Yeah. Um, you know, it underestimates the work that the natural language does. Yeah. I mean, that was one of the things 
uh, most striking things about ethnomethodology, and it's where I start uh, my course today, is with yeah. uh, sociologies and natural language activity. Yeah. Um, and it's one of which uh, people are largely in practice unconscious. Yeah. Uh, and so the extent to which what's being done comes from the structures of, of the language yeah. uh, rather from the, than from the mechanics of the methods or the logic of the yeah. theory is, is uh, yeah. massively understated, massively unappreciated. Yeah. I suppose in that sense of ordinary talk then, uh, in terms of uh, 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 pierces that bubble of, uh, of agency somehow, uh, uh, in some ways. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yes, no, I think, I think um, uh, the, 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 the geography of the language uh, isn't uh, really compatible with uh, a lot of the yeah. uh, interpretations of what people are saying yeah. and doing yeah. when they're operating with it. Yeah. Um, and just to you know, carry on, that obviously you've collaborated with, with colleagues in philosophy, yeah. Uh, yeah. Phil Hutchinson, uh, Rupert Reid, no such thing, uh, not, there's no such thing as a social science, clearly in defence of Peter Winch, and book, a specialist book on Kuhn as well, with yeah. uh, yourself and Rupert Reid, that yeah. that's uh, uh, um, uh, interesting uh, position, uh, and Kuhn is still uh, um, uh, useful, yes. you know, in, 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 uh, in, in you know, contemporary theorising. Oh, no, he's still, uh, a, uh, still a prominent figure. Yeah, um, yeah. Uh, j just sort of moving on, I mean, uh, uh, to... to um, in a way, it's sort of the the, the the idea of sort of practitioners and uh, practitioners' knowledge or sort of lay knowledge is one way of sort of looking at it. And clearly, you've had work with um, Rank Xerox over the years and uh, with 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 Microsoft. And uh, um, how do you characterise that period in a way of uh, uh, in terms of uh, um, the application possibly of sociological knowledge? Uh, uh, um, well, I, I think. Yeah. Um, Graham Button uh, and uh, I and some other people uh, were actually involved in, in some work which um, in Reich Xerox actually came yeah. close to being a possible yeah. technology to, to develop. Yeah. But no, I mean, I, what I was doing with, with, with that work is same as I do here. I yeah. mean, it was, it was research, yeah. basically. Um, uh, it was sociology. Um, yeah. Uh, and whether or I mean I've never you know I've never been opposed to the application yeah. of sociology. Yeah. Uh, I don't think that sociological research should be motivated yeah. by the the wish to apply it. Yeah. Uh, I think it should be motivated by the wish to do some sociology yeah. and then see if it can be applied. Yeah. Uh, after all, I think for, for for political purpose, I think if if you, you did some really good sociology. Yeah. It could be applied as well by the enemies of your political project as by, yeah. as by yeah. its protagonists. Yeah. Uh, fortunately, it isn't that good and it's not yeah. going to uh, transform the political scene very significantly at yeah. all. Uh, so, no, I've always, always thought, well, um, you know, it's anybody's right to, to yeah. make use of stuff. And I suppose there was a whole series of, of serious publications, the Air Traffic Control with John Hughes and a whole series of publications looking at computer-supported cooperative work, uh, uh, human-computer interaction, artificial intelligence. There was a whole raft of work and a whole period of years there that, you know, my PhD, for example, was in the early days of that with Xerox yeah. and yeah. things of that kind. So there was some really interesting and useful uh, intellectual work that was done. Yes, well, I mean, we got you know we got obviously um, uh, access to a, a very interesting field of yeah. of uh, academic activity, cooperative, yes. computer supported cooperative work. Yeah. Um, I mean, that yeah. was that was a, a, yeah. a product of that, yeah. uh, and for a while that was a very interesting thing yeah. uh, to be in. Um, I mean, we were initially motivated by the idea yeah. of um, uh, attempts to construct. Um, uh, a rule-based system for air traffic yeah. control yeah. Uh, and so uh, by the time we got funding uh, it turned out that um, uh, air traffic control were no longer interested in developing a rule-based system right, right. <laughs> so instead we just studied air traffic control yeah. and then it turned out there was um, this all this research on yeah. uh, using technologies and yeah. we had uh, some excellent field workers doing the field work for us, yeah. Dave Randall, Richard Harper, who are yeah. still yeah. collaborators. Yeah. Um, uh, and so we had very good yeah. 
Uh, and I suppose at the time, if we look at it, if it, people talk about sociology being reflective and zeitgeist, I mean, this was centrally dealing with uh, the, the widespread use of, 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 uh, of new technologies. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah. Um, well, obviously, the work of Lucy Suchman was obviously yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, hugely influential yeah. um, in, in the computer science world. Yeah. You know, and, and it was, uh, I'm always saying it was a very, I mean, at least from our point of view, it was a very adventitious meeting. I mean, yeah. uh, here were computer scientists who were trying to design for workplaces and organizational yeah. environments, uh, and most of them just wanted to write code. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, of course, they didn't really want to go around hanging about workplaces to see yeah. uh, what people in workplaces were about. So, the fact that uh, and there weren't many others, I don't think, in the UK at the time. A group of us at Manchester were really interested in hanging about workplaces, meant yeah. uh, that they were only too happy to have us yeah. uh, come and um, come and look at what they were doing. Uh, yeah. Well, to come and yeah. get, no, to give us access to all kinds of research sites to see what people were yeah. were actually doing. So uh, I've always subscribed to the what you might call the Lancaster line because yeah. uh, I hold to it with with John Hughes that. Um, it, 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 ethnomethodology is not a base for a kind of input into design method yeah. uh, as such uh, in these contexts. It's mostly uh, a basis for uh, gathering materials that can yeah. be input into the understandings of designers yeah. who can then apply whatever methods are useful to, yeah, yeah, sure. to exploit it. I mean, one of the things that, that when I initially went to Xerox to do, which would have been a different matter, was to uh, develop some researches into the design process. Yeah. In which yeah. case, we would have had something to say about the design process. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But after a fairly short period, uh, the, the yeah. projects at, at, at Frank Xerox in Cambridge were rationalised. and. Yeah. And that was, was one strand that was um, yeah. abandoned. And I suppose it was working with people within computer science that were possibly coming with a slightly different sort of mentality and in a way of, uh, of looking at things. Oh, yeah. No, it was, it was very good to work with, with yeah. computer scientists. I mean, they're very smart people. Yeah. And um, a, lot, you know, a lot of them uh, were interested in sociology, too. Yeah. So, yeah, sure. um, you know, it, it was a very... I mean, CSCW, in my yeah. experience, uh, was a, a very collegial... Yeah. Enterprise. Deeply, I suppose, interdisciplinary. Oh, yeah. 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 Just turning back and looking, was well, over the years, I think we chatted before, and there's, I think it's around about 55. Uh, over 50. Over 50. Over 50 completed PhDs, which by anyone's uh, uh, record <laughs> is, is very impressive. It's, it's uh, you know, more than one a year. It's inc it, it, it contributes to a whole generation of, of, of sociologists and social scientists who've gone out there, including myself and others who've gone out there. And uh, certainly there's, there's the, the people have, have got chairs and done very well and been successful. Uh, I mean, how important has that been to you over the years to, to be able to do that? Well, most of my friends started off as, right. as students in one right. form or another. What was the, who was um, the very first one? Uh, it was the very first, I think it was John Macaulay. Right. Um, who's over at, I think he may have retired now, at Sheffield yeah. Hallam in the right. business school. Right. Um, he was very early. I think yeah. he, he was probably the first. Was there Drew there? Yeah, Paul Drew, yeah. Paul Drew yeah. wasn't yeah. actually a student of mine. Oh, no, okay. no, right, we, right. We, we knew him through um, yeah. Lancaster. Right. I mean, one of the things about uh, ethnomethodology here in Manchester is uh, when I came here, there were uh, all those institutions which have been absorbed into yeah. or converted into the Manchester Met. Yeah. which were then teachers' colleges and, yeah. and the College of Commerce and so yeah. on, which were full of recently appointed young sociologists yeah. Yeah. Uh, who were wildly enthusiastic. Yeah. Rod Watson was yeah. one of the most enthusiastic. Dave Francis. Yeah, Dave Bob Francis, yeah. Bob Hannes. Yeah. Uh, uh, but, but also were employed in these places and, yeah. and wanted to get a PhD. Yeah. Um, yeah. So uh, it was a very good way of recruiting. Yeah. Lots of very high quality uh, yeah. standard students, yeah. uh, and of course the, the 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 number of completed theses is well down to the yeah. uh, dedicated and hard working yeah. uh, character of, of all of these these people. But uh, you know, in that kind of relationship, you talk to them, yeah. 
yeah. and and this is why I do so much collaborative stuff because you start yeah. off you're, you're, you're working your instructional relationship is, is a conversational one yeah. uh, and at some yeah. point you say well we should try and make something out of this and yeah. Yeah. And, and I greatly enjoy uh, collaborative work yeah 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 um, just uh, uh, um Moving on, I mean, in the sense of uh, um, just reflecting more generally, 50 years has gone. We're looking now at the, uh, the, 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 the next, uh, uh, the, what the future sort of holds for sociology. Uh, the, there's, um, uh, obviously, there's debates about civicness, about uh, uh, this idea of a public sociology, uh, idea of sociology possibly being more accountable or uh, uh, more transparent. Um, what, what do you think that the future holds for uh, for, for sociologists, it's certainly obviously here at Manchester in your context, but in a sense, more, more, more generally. Well, well, if I, if I could be around for it, right, I'm right. sure it, I'm sure it would go even faster. Right, right. Um, but no, it really doesn't seem like like 50 years. Um, right. But um, well, I, 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 I very much a Kuhnian, I think. If yeah. if sociology is to kind of yield the kind of uh, achievement that I think lots and lots of sociologists still yearn for, yeah. you know, which is really convert it into something uh, that's powerfully scientific. Yeah. Uh, this will, of course, come from left field. It will not be anything yeah. that's anticipated. And I think yeah. uh, projects to make sociology more scientific, yeah. uh, which uh, remain, will yeah. probably remain as fruitless uh, as they have been so far. Um, I, I, nothing I see in the nature of sociology uh, suggests to me that in actual, rather than as a matter of pieties, uh, if even that, that, that most people in sociology want uh, to work towards a unified yeah. uh, and coherent subject. Yeah. Um, I mean, the extent to which stuff has migrated into cultural studies, yeah. to feminism and so on, uh, not claiming these things yeah. for sociology, but... Yeah. Uh, stuff as as diversified into different branches yeah. suggest the centripetal yeah. tendencies within what yeah. we call a discipline. So I'm not expecting yeah. that there'll be any kind of ground level and effective movement yeah. towards bringing what sociology has done together. I mean, yeah. it remains uh, resolutely non-cumulative. I think is the has the environment changed? Was in the sense that you know there's oh. concerns about the the corporate corporatization of university environments, the, the, the sort of challenge of autonomy, the challenge on scholastic work, the rise of the, of the, of the new academic, if you will, well, as different from well, the, the scholar. It, is that something that's... Well, my view of educational policy or higher educational policy, it started going wrong just about the time uh, I got a job in university and it's been going wrong uh, ever since. No, I think, um, you know, the, the, the uh, subordination of... Uh, academic work and education uh, of, yeah. of students to uh, bureaucratic structures is a, a yeah. very regrettable yeah. uh, and, and produces rather spurious yeah. uh, arrangements. A lot of these yeah. assessment operations are yeah. really pretty meaningless, yeah, yeah. I think. But, um, you know, they're essential to uh, the employment conditions of uh, of sociologists, and though yeah. I've got a lot of criticism of sociology, yeah. I've no desire to see uh, people who do it get sacked. Yeah. Um, <laughs> though some people I know do, yeah. but um, no, I, th I think um, the 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 public sociology stuff uh, seems to me um, unnecessary in a way. I mean, if you want to have your sociology engage yeah. uh, with affairs in the world and stuff like that. Well, go ahead and do it. There's nothing to stop you. Yeah. Um, yeah. You don't need a program. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And of course, the trouble with programs is the kind of exemplars uh, that people offer you of what might be done uh, don't seem all that wildly yeah. impressive and don't seem the sorts of things that could begin to have far reaching yeah. consequences. Yeah. Um, well, my last question was, is that. Uh, obviously, you know, looking back over your, your, your career, uh, one year off fif fifty years here, uh, it's you, you, you're not retiring yet. You've you, you got a sabbatical. You're working on a, a book, uh, finishing a book on rational choice theory, I believe. You're working on another book on uh, social re philosophy, of social research methodology, on, on your sabbatical. For me, there's a what you have is a constant curiosity. I think you've referred to it as a 
as an itch before. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I'm just uh, fascinated as to, as to how you sustain that. Uh, what, what keeps that itch? Well, I can't stop it. <laughs> uh, I mean, I, I, as I say, I was doing this, you know, worrying about these kind of things uh, before I'd even heard of sociology. Um, and, you know, I, I always find things, oh, no, no, no. Uh, get me going and start me thinking. So I, I, I don't need any reason to do it. I mean, I also think this is, I also maintain that as a fundamental position. You don't need a reason to do sociology. You do it because you can't help yourself yeah. uh, in many ways. Um, and and uh, uh, I, I will stop when I stop. I, I won't. I can't. I mean, I can't control yeah. um, okay. uh, the urge to read this or do that or argue with the following. So. Yeah. Um, well, I'm, I'm very grateful of the department, I, and I'm sure many others are very grateful that you, you still have the itch. <laughs> well, it's, it's, been, uh, it's been a lot of fun, um, okay. you know, and, and I've been very happy to be here, though it's not always been a quiet and untroubled life. <laughs> okay. Thanks, Professor Shoke, for the You're interview. You're welcome. Uh, um, uh, thanks for that. Okay. Thanks for having me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs>